Hello, my name is Tom Stone. I'm an American photographer. I photograph what power and control do to people who have it and people who do not. I often describe it as what happens in the wake of exercised power. But I'm equally concerned with what happens at the crest, because the connection we have with each other is not optional. I came at photography because of the kids, young people on the street, hustlers and drifters, young people without families, in any traditional sense at least. I grew up not far from the street, living in a van or with friends, always moving. But I had a family with me. We were always together. I was never alone. Humanity seems often characterized by its absence, and there is much inhumanity alone on the road. We were three on the road, my mother and I, and my stepfather. Before our time as nomads, we were 140, living communally in Los Angeles' famed Source family. The Source family was a spiritual community started by Jim Baker, a former judo champion and World War II war hero. He became Father Yod and then Yehoah. The Source restaurant on Sunset Strip was famous for its organic vegetarian food and its celebrity regulars such as John Lennon, Warren Beatty, Julie Christie, and Marlon Brando, and also as the location for the final scene between Woody Allen and Diane Keaton in Annie Hall. The source teachings were an Aquarian mix of Hermetic science, Kabbalah, Kundalini yoga, and Essene principles. The collection was somewhat fashioned on Manly P. Hall's Secret Teachings of All Ages. It was a time when people sought to change the world in big ways, to change how people lived together and shared the earth. The source sought to make heaven a place here. And we did a good job of it before the system of things here started to take notice. We were driven from place to place until we were no more. It's hard to change the world. Most everyone says they want to, but what does it mean? Is it how we treat each other? Is it what we value and reward? Is it the amount of evil and suffering? Is it the amount of unhappiness? I can't say that I know. And I'm not sure I've gotten a straight answer when I've asked. But I know the balance of things seems wrong, and that we accept things that we shouldn't. We are smothered by the weight of history and tradition, and we justify what is done by its precedent. We know better, and we see better, but we fail to do better on balance. Instead, we allow the powerful to prey on the weak, systematically, Wealth accumulates, and a vast population persists in a state of sustaining consumption with modest earnings and growing debt. Capitalism and capital markets are described as the greatest generator of wealth and progress the world has ever seen. Perhaps, but it seems their greatest feat is reallocation to the top. For example, in the U.S., a wealthy 10% own 80% of equities. The last 30 to 40 years have seen an extreme growth in inequality. One measure of this is the Gini coefficient. It is a measure of statistical dispersion, i.e. inequality of distribution, which is often applied to income and wealth. In the U.S., while poverty levels do not compare, inequality between rich and poor has gotten to a point where it rivals China, and is actually worse, according to Gini figures calculated by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. Europe has held much stronger figures, though I would wager the financial crisis has pushed the trend in the wrong direction. So I photograph people who skirt the edges of things. People whose connection to the broader flow is murky or obscure, mistaken as more, less, or different than they are. They aren't really seen and don't really belong. That's everyone sometimes, but some more often. 
I try to establish a line for a moment. I hope to connect, and I see the most beautiful and the most heartbreaking things. To my thinking, the original human trauma is our separation. We are too close not to need each other, and too far to trust each other. We rely on dubious senses and clever devices to interact, but we are alone in our thoughts. Lonely, insecure, and uncertain, we pair, we group, we associate, we try to belong and we seek to exclude. We form bonds by geography, religion, economy, and otherwise, but it is all precarious. We come together and we drive apart, and we climb our ladder. We step away from those who don't belong, and we help those who do. We are connected rung by rung, though less and less, as we push and pull. But some do not climb, and below the earth is littered with them. They fit too poorly, they stand apart, they stand without. And what of them, these ones who don't belong, or who are excluded, who don't fit, or don't try? Is there nothing they value? Is there nothing of them we value? I count it as a measure of our ignorance, the depth of poverty in the world. It is a glaring marker to how far we have not come, yet it has always driven our advance, on less fortunate backs and against less fortunate fate. But is there really no connection there? Does such fate, whether choice or circumstance, speak nothing of us? Tell me we do more than advance in place, with so many left behind. Or promise me we can do better. Say we can reflect ourselves, us and them. That we can see the ways we overlap and distinguish the ways we grow apart. And pledge that we can learn to fit all of our misshapes, to reward value beyond charity and beyond the marketplace, to be better to each other, to be better ourselves, and promise me it could be a better world, or tell me we are at our best.